welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2021 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director, in conversation with Uliana Peñaranda Loftus, the director behind the film, The Crossing, which is programmed as a part of this year's Global Peace Film Festival. The in-person screenings begin September 21st and run through September 26th. The online virtual screenings begin September 27 and run through October 3rd. All Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2021 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director, in conversation with Uliana Peñaranda Loftus, the director behind The Crossing, a film that you can see as a part of the upcoming Global Peace Film Festival. In-person screenings begin September 21st and run through September 26th. Online virtual access begins September 27th and runs through October 3rd. All the information regarding the film's descriptions, ticketing, and other upcoming events can be found at peacefilmfest.org. And now let's welcome Juliana. Wonderful to have you with us. And this is your second film with us. Uh, so we're delighted uh, to have you back and to, to, to see uh, the great project that you were up to since the last time we had seen you with Landfill uh, Harmonic. Yes, thank you, Kelly. And uh, uh, thank you, Nina, for having me here. I really appreciate you take the time to show my film. It's, it's these invitations are uh, wonderful for people to get to know what's happening in South America. So, so yes, thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, and we are delighted to have you this second film of yours with the, at the Global Peace Film Festival. Uh, Landfill Harmonic was a big favorite um, still is a favorite among, you know, among people who've been to the festival. So I'm looking for, you know, we're all looking forward to, to people seeing The Crossing. Um, so let's start out. Uh, please tell us about The Crossing. Tell us about the film. Sure. The Crossing takes place in my hometown, Cucuta, Colombia. Uh, Cucuta is a border town that is next to Venezuela. And since uh, 2014, it has been receiving thousands, and now, as of today, millions of Venezuelans that are fleeing their country because of the economic, uh, political, and humanitarian crisis. So in February of 2019, um, I heard from my husband, who was watching TV, that, um, that the name of my city was everywhere. And he was in CNN and he was in, in the news and he heard, um, have you heard what's going on in your city? And surprisingly, I didn't know what was going on. And he said, Richard Branson, the billionaire, the um, British billionaire is going to your city and is gonna host uh, a very famous uh, concert with famous artists to bring attention to what's going on in Venezuela. And uh, so I started investigating that night. The concert was happening. That was a Sunday and the concert was happening on a Friday. The next day I said, this is my opportunity to tell the world what has been happening in Venezuela and in Colombia as a result of this exodus. And I said, so this story starts with my journey as I decide to traveled to my hometown from United States to Colombia in the last minute. And within a few days, somehow I put together this crew and I was able to get access to this concert to follow up what was going on. And the concert was mainly an excuse to tell the world, to call the attention to everybody who was not knowing what's, what was happening in, in Venezuela. And it was a really intense weekend that it started there and it ended up with the delivery of humanitarian aid. So 
the next day and that weekend, um, a lot of things happening. Uh, we tried to deliver trucks and tons of humanitarian aid to Venezuela. And unfortunately, um, things didn't come up the way that we expected. And the film follows that. Um, initially, the film was going to be just that weekend. And uh, it was actually called The Weekend. And after that weekend, that intense weekend passed, um, I said, it's impossible to just finish this story here. I need to know what, ha what happens after that. And so I come back again three months later. I actually went back twice to follow up some of the characters that were there and to see how things were happening in the border. And sadly, will more people and more Venezuelans keep, keep living their country. Um, so that's, that's what the film is about. Well, and Juliana, um, you have a, a background in, in news, correct? Actually in filmmaking, but it just mm -hmm. happened in, in, fic in fiction film is my background. Um, wow. And uh, for some reason, I just end up in documentaries because I love how a storytelling can really make an impact and especially I would say especially documentaries you know can make an impact of how people perceived um perceive a story and not just news because news news are very important um but they just it seems like they go away you now with documentary we follow the subject matter as long as it's necessary so people really get to know those characters that are in the film and really get to relate to them um, my first documentary was uh, after September 11th, uh, 10 months after, after that, that I went to Afghanistan um, to follow this wonderful woman that was supporting education for, uh, for female and, and for little girls in Afghanistan. So that was when I really fell in love with the power of documentary. We came back with that footage and we were able to show that footage to an audience and uh, she was able to raise funds to support schools in Afghanistan. And that's when I fell in love with, with uh, the power of uh, documentary filmmaking. Well, um, and that is a remarkable uh, way to move from fiction to, uh, to documentary and so, so impactful. And, and all the reason why we have always been attracted to all the work from you that we've seen. Uh, Landfill Harmonic also had such a tremendous uh, hopeful and inspirational message. And I hope people can find your, your earlier work as well as watching The Crossing. And the one thing I, I, I did want to though, I guess the reason I, I had almost thought you had a news background was the, the depth of nuance that you bring to, uh, to the story of The Crossing because the, the border towns have a very interesting relationship and it's not a simple, a uh, good, bad, yes, no relationship. And you really bring out all of that nuance. And if you could talk about that. Uh, well, thanks for saying that because um, uh, I love that, that you um, appreciate that. I think it really helped that I was also from that town. And um, yes, I do like to explore, to get deeper into this story. And so that helps. And I was following the news too. Um, and the film starts with a news, uh, with a news clip, right? Um, but it also helped that I'm from there and I really connect with, the, with what the people were feeling, not just the refugees and the immigrants that were crossing, but also the local people. As a local people, you know, I still have family there. So I can see both points of, points of view of, of, of what, um, of how it feels getting thousands and millions of people going through your city and what it also feels like being a refugee and leaving everything that you had suddenly, you know, um, everything, your house, your family, sometimes in many situations, your children, uh, over 1 million children have been left um, with, um, grandparents or with friends while the parents go and look for jobs in, in other countries. So it's really sad. And I was trying to get that connection to be able to tell the audience the best story I could, I could tell.
Well, I think people will be, um, I think people will be surprised to find out what a, um, a complex story it is that the, your, your fellow, you know, um, uh, folks from your hometown, they, they would love to embrace these folks coming from Venezuela, but there are limits to their own resources and to their own ability to deal with things. So it's not a it it's not an easy answer because there is definitely a lot of emotional connection and support for the plight of the immigrants, but also you show the difficulties of dealing with a you know a large influx of people in a short period of time. Right, and I I feel like people could connect also because their migration, you know, here in the US, we also feel that migration, right? From Mexico and from uh, Central American countries, but more than, than saying migration is, I'm hoping that people would really look after that name and look at the faces that are behind migration, the mom, the dad, the grandparents, the children, 38%, of, of, of 5 million, according to the United Nations, um, as of July of this year, 5,650,000 Venezuelans have fled their country. And out of that, um, 38, it seems like 38% are children. That's what studies are, are, are saying. And not just the studies, I'm actually talking to the people who are supporting the refugees. And we did, uh, last week, we did the numbers with a one design, I mean, I'm meeting so many wonderful people that are stopping what they were doing and, and trying to help this crisis. And we did the numbers and we were like, okay, in one year in seven refugees that you help, you were able to help 7,600 children under 18 and then 9,600 girls. This is going over my friend's numbers, right? And um, so she was able to help for she and the volunteer volunteers. Um, I'm talking about Crystal Montañez. They were able to help uh, 45,000 migrants that without the help of those refugees, they would have had, had nothing to eat during that um, long walk because it takes days to cross, uh, I would say um, 1,000, miles sometimes that's what they cross from Venezuela to Quito for example and half of that to go to Bogota so uh they're just wonderful people behind but there is not enough uh, help and I was making this film to tell the world to please turn the head of what's happening there because I understand that there are many urgencies in the world so um that that's um yeah that's what's going on there well, that's a wonderful way to then discuss as, uh, as the programmer for Global Peace Film Festival, why I was attracted to this film, um, that there is an impact and there is a, a hopeful, inspirational message within it. And that really fits with our mission of, of trying to present and curate for, for our audience's stories that um, offer models of change and positive action that they can take back into their own lives yeah. and to their own communities. So if you want to uh, talk about some of you know, those steps that people watching your film could take. Sure, if um, you guys could go to uh, thecrossing.com, that's the website, the light just went down in here. So I'm going to, as a filmmaker, I'm always thinking about the light. <laughs> so, um, if they could go to um, thecrossingdoc.com, they will find on their philanthropy a link to all these um, websites. One of them is the one that I just mentioned, uh, Hope for Venezuela, and is there. Uh, there are like five organizations that they could decide, okay, I wanna help children, or I wanna help old, I wanna help a medical mission. So they can decide where their help will go. And sometimes people said, oh, things are tight. We don't have, you know, we don't have, we can no help now. There is always something that we could do, you know? <laughs> if we stop buying something, a pair of jeans that we wanna buy that month, it will help, you know, 
fifty dollars in 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 that part of the world, it it turns a lot. It helps a lot. We can you know they could help and and feed a lot of people with fifty dollars in in a day. Um, besides that, I I also children. I have children, and when my children look at my films, I feel like okay, they're learning more about the world. They're opening their eyes. So this is. Um, Documentaries really are a great way for families to establish a conversation of what's happening around the world. And that's one of the big reasons, major reasons why I make films. So people can start a dialogue and could say, okay, this is what's happening in South America, or this is what happened in Afghanistan, uh, which it, it was that first film that I made. Um, so, you know, it's amazing what document documentaries could teach other people and myself. I, I am always watching films too, to learn about what's going on in other parts of the world. And in, in the United States, you know, I myself try to I need to learn a lot of what's happening in our country. Um, but I think there is also a way to know what's happening in our community and also keep our eyes open in what's happening in the world. Those are such important points, and you so clearly articulated what people can do um, in order to support uh, this film and the issues that the film raises. Um, so one last question for you. Uh, what's next for you? Um, that's what I'm working on right now. It's, um, it's a film about uh, children. I am um, I am inspired by the power of children and how if we focus on, 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 on that potential of, of the children, we don't have to fix the, the, the men in the future, you know? Um, so the story is um, about a Venezuelan 10 year old boy that has to leave Venezuela. This is fiction inspired by real events. Uh, he has to leave uh, Venezuela to find her mom. Uh, her mom used to send messages to him and telling him, this is what I am. And then suddenly one time, the messages stop. And uh, the little boy was left with the grandma and the grandma is getting sick because there are no medications in Venezuela. Finding insulin in my story, it's the case of insulin. The grandma needs insulin. And the little boy just sees the needs that he has to cross the border and he has to go to uh, the town where I'm from, Cucuta, because that's where people actually cross the town and find medication. And so I'm following the story of this little boy um, and a lot of things is gonna be very inspirational too. Uh, it's gonna show he's resilient and it's hopefully it's gonna help other kids to see what other kids around the world are going through. And so right now we are writing that film. Oh, fantastic. Well, Juliana, we will definitely uh, be staying in touch with you as one of the things Nina and I love to do is to send out updates about our Global Peace Film uh, Festival family of filmmakers. <laughs> so we'll definitely be checking in with you about the progress on that particular project. And Thanks. regarding, oh, you're welcome. And regarding the crossing, again, if anyone would like to help or learn more, please go to thecrossingdoc.com. That's thecrossingdoc.com for more information about the film. And please do consider catching The Crossing either during our in-person screenings in Orlando or on our virtual access week, which begins September 27th and runs through October 3rd. Thank you again for uh, joining us in this GLOW and we will see you at the next GLOW.